Christ candle, which is lit on Christmas Eve, is a symbol of the light which entered this world, the light which shines in the darkness, the light which has illumined our lives. Now a reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let us pray together. O oh God, on this Christmas Eve, we are mindful of the beauty and joy it has brought and will bring. May the spirit of Christmas live, not just for this day, but rather be a glowing light which we carry with us each and every day of our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today is the third day of Christmas, and as we continue in Luke chapter 2, we are talking about prophecy. Specifically, we are telling the story of a man named Simeon, a man who was devout, a man who was righteous, and a man who was like every other man and woman in Israel 2,000 years ago, who were awaiting the consolation of Israel. To open the stage, we have Mary and Joseph who are taking their newborn son, Jesus, to the temple to dedicate him to God. This was the tradition at the time, the firstborn male of every family being specifically dedicated to the Lord's service. And Jesus was no different. Now Simeon was a man like any other Righteous, more devout perhaps, but he was waiting for what the text calls the consolation of Israel. What this means is that he is waiting for the Messiah. He is waiting for a savior who will deliver Israel from her torment, that will free Israel from foreign occupation, specifically at this time, Rome. He is waiting desperately and he goes to the temple each and every day, hoping, praying for this Messiah. Now Simeon is guided by the Holy Spirit, which is, as you know, God working here among us. And he came to the temple that day and he saw Jesus, who's a baby just like any other. But Simeon, guided by the Holy Spirit, guided by God, looked at this tiny baby who is only a couple days old, I believe eight days old per tradition, roughly. And he took the baby and he held the baby and he knew in his soul that this was the promised Messiah. And he praised God because his realization, his hopes, and his dreams for his life had come to fruition in this tiny baby. Verse 29, Master, 
that being a name for the Lord God. Now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. Simeon recognizes that his task is done. He has found the Messiah. He is holding the Messiah in his hands. And although the Messiah cannot change the world as a baby on that exact day, the hope and promise of the change is just a few years down the road. To continue. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon's eyes have seen the Lord's salvation. He has seen Israel's salvation. Verse 31 which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, verse 32, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Here we have a very specific concept of the Messiah. The Messiah traditionally is said to come for Israel, to save Israel. But Simeon, in his praise of God, while holding the baby Jesus, recognizes that this Messiah, that this baby will be a light, that he will be a revelation, that he will change everything for the Gentiles, which is every single nation that surrounds Israel, as well as for the people of Israel herself. Obviously, Mary and Joseph were amazed. How could they not be? They knew how special their child was, but to have a stranger whom they had never laid eyes upon recognize their child as such would have caused wonder and most likely quite a bit of surprise. After all, every child is brought to the temple in this way to be dedicated. And out of all the children in all the nation, Simeon recognizes their own baby Jesus. At this time, Simeon blessed them. He's blessing not only Jesus, but also his parents. And Simeon said to his mother, Mary, this is another prophecy, a new prophecy. This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. If I were Mary, I admit I would probably be a little frightened, but Mary was not. She took these words in the spirit in which they were given. These were the words of prophecy and words of devotion of Simeon. In his blessing, Simeon recognizes that Jesus, the child he was holding, had a destiny. And this destiny meant that Israel would rise, that people would realize who God was, what he was meant to be, how they should worship and adore him. This is a prophecy almost for a new religion a new way of life for Israel rising in the nations. But when some rise, others fall. And Simeon's prophecy shows this. And when he says that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, he is speaking about our hearts. Our inner hearts will be revealed under this new destiny. After all, God knows what is in our hearts. We cannot hide from him any more than we can hide from ourselves. Skipping over a few verses, verse 39. When they, Mary and Joseph, had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. So they saw this new thing. The destiny of Jesus was once again revealed, but for Mary and Joseph, it seemed to be just another day in their lives. They removed themselves from the temple and went home. They went 
to live. They went to be a family. They went to raise their child in the ways of their people and of their God. Concluding in verse 40, the child grew and became strong, that is, Jesus Christ. He was filled with wisdom, and the favor was of God was upon him. This is another way of saying that Simeon's blessing fell upon the baby Jesus. But not only that, all of the prophecies of the Messiah throughout the Old Testament, even into the books such as the Maccabees, all of those prophecies fell on Jesus, and God favored him. This story, as I said earlier, was one of prophecy, but it is also a story of recognition. Simeon did not know exactly what he was looking for when he was praying and hoping for the consolation of Israel. It was the Holy Spirit that guided him to the temple that day, who guided him to the baby Jesus, in which he saw the consolation he so desired, even though he knew he probably would not live to see it come to fruition. The story of the prophetess Anna, who is also told in Luke chapter 2, is one of a widow, someone who is quiet, someone who is pious, someone who is small in that way, in which you focus all of your inner energies upon yourself, only to look outward towards the Lord. Anna recognized the baby Jesus as well. When she looked inward, her outward gaze came to the baby in ways that we, 2,000 years later, with a different type of religion and spirituality, may not quite understand. Jesus was recognized in Epiphany by the three foreign kings the three magi who traveled across country unknown, following a star, knowing that there was hope and truth if they could only come to the end of that star's reach. And they found it in the baby Jesus. Although perhaps that was not quite what they were expecting. But they recognized him. They gave him gifts. They praised him. And then they went back into their own country. Jesus was countlessly recognized throughout his short life here on earth. People saw in him a Messiah. They saw in him a savior. They saw in him a prophet. They saw a potential king. They saw a man who clearly shone with greatness even if their language or their minds couldn't quite grasp what that greatness is. And so, this Christmas time, Jesus comes into our lives as the light of the world. All you need do is recognize him by whatever name you choose. Recognize him, acknowledge him, and love him. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Amen. Mm -hmm.